Let's talk about how you can be happier more and more happy. This topic is what I call ending and breaking the bad emotional habits that are literally that, they're habits. And at a certain point, it's almost like our body does this just out of recreation. It's an automatic response in situations that just creates more suffering that we don't need. So when I discovered this, when I figured out that this was a thing that I was doing, I became so much happier because I recognized that I didn't have to continue that habit anymore. And it did take a little practice. Like any habits, it takes some practice to create a change. But today I want to give you some information on how you can do that. So welcome to my channel. If we haven't met, my name is Macy Monterazzo and I'm the creator of Super Loved and also the creator of Love Vibe TV. And I am YouTube's favorite unicorn wrangler, bringing you more of the good stuff. And I do that through sharing my favorite consciousness tools, manifesting tools, and teachings and practice that help us to live a better life. And a lot of what I've talked about up until now, which is, is kind of expanding and growing, is how you can find your special person in the world. And this topic today is a big part of this, because if we have emotional habits of depression, sadness, frustration, overwhelm, confusion, guilt, fear, that kind of stuff, and I'm not saying that you need to turn into some sort of fembot and not have any emotions at all. But it is so key to notice that if our body is just operating on these automatic responses that for me, one of them was I would just wake up feeling just depressed. And then I was like, wow, I'm depressed. And then all day was kind of a heavy start. When I recognized it, had just become a habit that I did that, I could change it. So this is the opportunity you have to, because I do want to acknowledge that there are circumstances in our life that come up, a death of a loved one, you know, a, a trauma or something that is in your experience that elicits emotion, that's normal. And this is about getting past the things that we do sort of recreationally. And I'll explain where those can come from in a second. So I love using the word recreational on this topic because it kind of adds some amusement. Let's admit, it's kind of funny to think that we would do recreational sadness or recreational confusion when you know, you know that what a recreational thing is, is, is actually something you choose almost for pleasure. So, <laughs> well, I hope for pleasure in most cases, but in this case, there's like this element of choice. So when I know that I'm just recreationally doing some drama around something, then what I can do is then step back and go, wait a second. I am doing this thing. I notice I'm doing this thing. So I created a little thing to use for this. I notice I am doing fill in the blank. And sometimes it is general, like I'm just doing drama around this, or I'm notice I'm doing fear around this, or I notice I'm doing a lot of anxiety, or I notice I'm doing sadness. I mean, the thing that I want to remind us all as the beings that we be, I know that anyone who's coming to this channel has some element of magic. You're probably an empath. You're probably a creative. You're probably a professional where you have really been able to create amazing things in your life. And most of the people out there that I speak to have these pretty powerful spidey senses 
like pretty powerful awarenesses that whether they know it or not, they're tapping into a lot of things in the world. So oftentimes, one, we're aware of the emotions in the world. Like the other day, one of my friends said, oh, I woke up so depressed and sad and I did just, I don't know what was going on. I, it's just, why is the energy so weird all of a sudden? And then turn on the TV and there is Queen Elizabeth's funeral, like the most watched funeral ever is <laughs> on TV. So, you know, we're tapping in, we can be aware of it in the world. So it's, one powerful to recognize that we're sensitive beings like that and we can pick it up from the world. And if we are aware of that and then we decide I am that, then we are in that. So if we are aware of sadness and we decide I am sad, then our body is going to respond to that declaration. So this really can be so powerful to start asking questions like, okay, I am aware of sadness. I am noticing I'm doing some sadness right now. Is this mine? So that's the next question you can ask. Is this mine? One of my favorite things about studying the body of work called access consciousness is that's one of the tools. Is this mine? And then when you ask the question, oftentimes what happens is you start noticing a shift because so much of what we're aware of isn't even ours. So that's the one thing to be aware that our bodies can pick up a lot, but also be aware that we can take on some habitual emotional things. This is really big in the dating world because, um, for example, if you've ever done online dating, and if you've ever told anyone you've done it or are doing it, you'll get a whole often, I shouldn't say you will, but I would say often the first thing people will go to is sharing all their um, drama stories, like their horror stories, their terrible dates and, oh, this is the way it is. This is the way they are online and have a lot of these generalizations that then, you know, becomes the habit of, oh, this is online dating. Well, actually, you know, the there's more people finding love online than in any other space right now. Like a significant number of people who are getting married are meeting online right now. So be aware of how we can go into kind of just going with the masses and the emotions. And we have some really lovely snoring in the background. So hopefully you're getting the free sound healing. You're welcome. Um, but notice that because people have habits of going into drama, complaining, frustration, confusion at times that aren't actually required or even true sometimes. So you may even notice that some of your emotional habits are modeled after a parent. Um, I noticed that sometimes um, I would go into a lot of just worrying, like just, oh, I'm so worried about that. I would just use the words, I'm so worried about that. I'm so worried about that. I'm so worried about that because I picked that up from my family, where I would hear them saying that a lot. And what it just created for me was just more anxiety and stress. I don't have to do that. I don't have to do worry. So I notice I'm doing worry. What else can I do? Like, what else is possible there? Worry doesn't create greater. Stress doesn't create greater. Anxiety doesn't create greater. And it's worth checking in to see, am I just doing this as a habit? Dating is pretty much the perfect um, platform to kind of show how this can be developed into habits. Like people are often saying, oh, I'm just so 
I don't know what to do on a first date. Well, is that actual anxiety or fear or is there some element of excitement to that? Like be present with what you, you're actually doing. And when you know you're doing it and you speak it in that way, and this isn't a blaming or a rightness or a wrongness of um, yourself or what anyone else is choosing or doing, but it gives you some space in between. Because if you're just immediately like, oh, I'm so depressed. Oh, I'm so worried. Oh, I'm so fearful. Then there's nowhere to go with that. You're just in it. But if you're choosing to go to, wow, I'm aware that there's sadness here. You immediately have some space. You immediately have some space to ask, is this mine? Or to, to even look at what is this creating for me right now? And you know what is really here? Is this something that I, anxiety is going to do anything with? Usually it doesn't. <laughs> so start looking at that because um, I know that once I started clearing out my recreational stress, like, oh, wow, I'm about to go on a trip, which I am right now. In the past, I would have done a lot of recreational stress and overwhelm. I realize I don't actually have to do that. It doesn't do more. It's just like I was just, oh, pre-trip, I do overwhelm and stress. I don't, I've totally removed that from my agenda so that I can just choose ease, choose anticipation. And those, that feels really good to me. That feels really fun and light. So you can do the same thing in so many situations. And I promise you, if you start paying attention to your emotional state and use awareness around it, I mean, the key is to notice, did something actually occur that, you know, this is coming from? Most of the time, it's there's nothing there. It's just all of a sudden you find yourself in an emotional state. How many of you have gone to a store and just come out like, oh, the vibe in there was weird. I feel kind of funky now. Like that's because there's just so many energies all around us and we're like a sponge for that at times. And it's up to us to go, okay, not mine, return to sender, not mine, return to sender, whatever, and be aware of it. And then, you know, obviously, when there are things occurring in your life that require more attention and care, get the support you need, ask for what you need. But today's conversation is an opportunity to truly be happier. What if you could have more ease, more joy, more playfulness, more magic, more mystery, more possibilities that are fun for you. And from there, it is this how you love your life is your love life, playing into love and moving into your world in a more um, pleasurable, light way. So let's let go of those bad emotional recreational habits that aren't serving us and choose something different. And I'm so grateful that you're here watching this. If you liked this, share it with a friend, like, comment. I love getting your messages. It makes me so happy. And thank you for being a part of this channel. And we'll see you really soon. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.